Hello? Does this thing work? This is the Peak Boredom Podcast. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Peak Boredom Podcast! Woo! Everyone, today we've got our friend Benita here for a little chat. Yes, she's our high school friend. Let's start with a very simple question then. When you were a child, it doesn't matter at what point, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? I remember being asked that question that I could remember of was during this kiddish graduation ceremony where the head of the school, she hands out like these tiny little diplomas for like everyone and like <laughs> you get into like, you know, like, you know, you go off stage and you shake her hand and then you get the diploma and all that stuff. And she leaned down on every single kid and she asked them like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, actually I don't, I'm pretty sure this is every single kid, but she asked me that question. And I said, I just want to make the world a better place. That was it, like a super cliche, but it felt very truthful to me at that age that I don't think was the same kind of truthful when I told people I wanted to be a doctor or wanted to be a pediatrician and whatnot. Cause I realized like, it's not because I wanted, like I didn't want to be a doctor, but at that time, my responsive doctor was just me realizing that if I say something that people want to hear, they'll shut up because I didn't want to be questioned as a child, especially because I as a child also don't know. It's like, why are you asking me these questions? And I was very prickly, I suppose. It was just like, all right, I'm just gonna give you like doctor because you're just gonna nod and move on. And I think there was also a point where I make the argument, I don't want to be a doctor because, you know, I think there's like a specific calling for certain people to like sit down in the field. Yeah. So I know I want to make an impact, I don't know yet what it was, at least as a kid. Did you end up doing anything in your life to pursue that whole doctor avenue? Everyone was convinced I was going to go to medical school at some point in my life. Like everyone around, like including teachers, like friends, like family. Because if you just take away my transcript and you see the subjects I take, you'll be like, oh yeah, definitely somewhere in the medical field. The social science criteria that I fulfilled was still science-y. I took psychology. I didn't even bother with like history or business to make me look well-rounded. It was like psych, that's it. I took like bio and camp, which was, I think it's a mistake, but whatever. You know, I mean, obviously I had moments in my life like throughout high school where I was like oh maybe I'll go for criminology or criminal justice or maybe I'll go for marine biologist or like a vet like I don't know there were a lot of you know back and forth but I decided that it was safe because it was something that people it seems like it fits the expectation of whatever people surrounded me seem to have this idea of me so like I think because I lied so much to myself that I didn't, I didn't even realize I was lying. And then I went to college majoring in neuroscience. I like, I think it's also tricky because I actually like science. I've always liked science as a kid. So like before this whole, you know, idea about like, oh, I want to be a doctor whatsoever. I've always liked science beforehand because mm-hmm. I like the one thing that I would always ask out of a bookstore was a book on animals. Like, that was, like, literally, that was, like, the one that I really liked. Like, I remember one of my earliest birthday present was an encyclopedia of the human body. That was, like, my birthday present. Or, like, Hey, you're more medical than me. My first, like, first real interest in biology was dinosaurs. Oh, I mean, well, that's cool. I could care less about dinosaurs as a kid. I I mean, I I like dinosaurs, but it's, like, painting them, not, 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 not. (laughs) I don't have a science brain at all. I see I did, but that's another story. <laughs> like until today, like I'm still fascinated by it, mm. which is also a clue. Like obviously I'm no longer in the science field, but yeah, I did neuroscience because I do like learning about the brain. That was my justification. My college counselor, whom I think we all share in here, <laughs> my college counselor was telling me that maybe I should look into creative writing because she found out that like I published a book and whatnot. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just, I told her that no, no, no. Like I didn't, I mean, I had my own qualms about why I didn't want to pursue a creative major aside from the fact that like, oh, my parents would probably not approve. And I agree, I probably would not approve myself going for it. But I have this strong idea, but like, I want to go to college where I get to learn something that I can't learn on 
obviously you can learn the theory about you know like how the human body works or how the brain works and whatnot but you can't replicate the lab experience which is stupid of me because i hated labs in high school the only thing that i love from labs were like dissection which is important because once i get into college i met this professor uh, my sophomore year actually and i really liked her style of teaching she's basically like female sherlock except with social and stuff she's very revered in her community uh, at least in the neuroscience department everyone loves her although there's like a strong hate side of it too because people think she's so intense in like her material she talks like sherlock she talks like the information just comes out like really quickly but i like that because i was like yes we're finally learning something you know i like i i'm that obnoxious kid who just can't like i can't stand slow lectures i asked her um for a research position because i heard that her lab was opening um like four different spots yeah and she told me that one of the spot was surgery related you know i liked this section that was like the one thing that i liked but also like i just hated the whole idea about like pipetting and like you know all like test tube works and like all that i just i couldn't deal with that like, that reminds me of your cubicle incident but i just i really like the idea of like working with my hands and like having that set of challenge to tackle where it's like a new problem every day I feel like if i was in an alternate universe and i have the mindset of wanting to become a doctor i know for sure like i'm going to go for neurosurgery Working in that lab was actually what switched me over to realizing that this is not the place for me, which is funny because I have that revelation of knowing that in an alternate universe this is probably what I'm going to do, but it's also that moment where I realized like I couldn't I couldn't spend 8 hours in a lab working on something that I know is not going to be my future either. Yeah. I feel like it's important for people to understand that Sometimes even if you make a decision about where you want to go, it's important to get experience in that field yeah. or else you're not really going to know for sure because there have been times where I thought I would be okay with so my story sounds linear compared to you you both cuz <laughs> oh yeah sounds, it's oh, not yeah. Really linear because I'm not as straightforward as the people who know since growing up I want to be this I'm going to pursue yeah. this I end up being this I'm not as linear but I'm more linear than you guys. Mm-hmm. But even within the field of science there's still a bit of flip-flopping between like which industry I want to go to. Yeah. And if you don't, you know, dip your feet in the water for a bit then you're not going to know whether you actually like that field or not. Sometimes it's okay to go into a field and then come out of it saying I hated that so yeah. much. Yeah. Compared to you guys So my journey is way more experimental. I think my counselor who we all share <laughs> just kind of funny. <laughs> just going to shout it out. Hi Ibu Angeline, we're Bye. here because of you. <laughs> Hi, thanks. <laughs> uh, she was really helpful because she made me think of what are the skills I want to develop in my undergrad? Mm. Or like what just like what are the skills that I'm that I've been honing all these times doing all these like random projects jumping around i mean i have so many more but i'm just gonna like not say it <laughs> uh, and then she's well, the one thing i noticed is i'm really good at communicating i guess and like presenting myself differently and writing myself to different people and making stuff together so she was like you know just like reading you on all these random things you did our counselor say that you should major in communication i was like are you crazy First of all, I'm not an extrovert. <laughs> I'm like scared of people. Second of all, are you crazy? <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm sorry, Wesley. I'm just I didn't really click to me what I was doing was that and that I'm doing it, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, um in a sense she was right that I needed to hone all my skills. That's why I agreed to major in that. But I definitely didn't stick like that wasn't the only factor that I was doing in university. I also majored in geography just because I like helping people and I wanted to figure out where that's going. It's tricky because three of us seem to be bound by ex- society's expectations mm-hmm. of what they want us to take, right? It was definitely easier for me when I said to people I wanted to be a doctor that they were like, "Yeah, 
great that sounds like a noble cause you know you're gonna be helping people you gotta be smart you're you're definitely very curious so you can definitely go into that field but it didn't feel like a decision that clicked with me and unfortunately when i was younger i was very indifferent to quite a lot of things so the career counselor that we had in high school she was like you were very indifferent to a lot of these you need to make a personal decision and like to a certain extent trust your gut yeah mm-hmm. and at that time that decision made sense because i was doing a lot of these things and this is my gateway to university i guess yeah i think like that like the mindset of like making do with where you are mm-hmm. is clearly very important because i the whole idea of you know like why i stuck for so long even if like even if i knew like i hated labs so like why am i even in neuroscience if i'm hating labs was because that was like at least like there's a safety net for it and there's a lot of ideas about like oh it's seen as something noble like you get attached to this idea of what people attach to what you decide to do and for me i definitely struggle with that of like letting that ideal that people have of me go because it seems so yeah. it seems so safe right like i've i've personally like been faced with like situations where i know people don't take me seriously and then they find out what major i was and they're like oh oh you must be smart and then they treat me really differently that was such a shock for me because i never really put stock in that way i i think that that's such a stupid idea of like stereotyping people based on what course they take what yeah. degree they take yeah. because i've definitely sat in a lecture hall you would expect like an undergraduate hall filled with biology students to be like all smart i guess that's the mindset that people have i have sat in a full room of maybe 300 undergraduate students who all major in some version of biology and one of them asked who dolly the sheep was <laughs> even i know <laughs> Like, okay. like also like the whole idea of this is also like perpetuating the stereotype that like people in STEM are superior than people who are not in STEM and that's not true because I think it's like you're undermining one part of the brain for the other part of the brain or it's like Maybe just it's like stereotyping the fact that your journey your career journey or your journey as a person is just like one straight line people's journey are like just because your face is like oh you're the editing of yeah. you love video editing in this school doesn't mean that you do you don't have that other side of yourself that's more yeah. like yeah. I think like a lot of people put stock on your background and like mm. as the precursor to what you do and I don't think that's necessarily true I mean obviously for certain fields it is true obviously like before you become a doctor you probably have to get an MD done yeah but yeah. for a lot of fields like that's not often the case I think like getting out of that mold is sort of hard because people seem so inclined to just you know what we're just going to put you in one box right and like yeah. that's it that's who you are but that's not necessarily true for anyone really even the most strictest person who just only fits that one thing right um, i think in a way as an analogy we should think of education more as a tool box or more like the tools in our kit and the thing is that for different things you need different tools right so by taking certain courses certain degrees you're adding another tool to your toolkit but it doesn't tell people what you're fixing you they can guess but at the end of the day it's not good to stereotype people it's bad to like basically predict like oh this you have this tool automatically you do this it's not it's not good to limit people and box people in yeah. i know you've definitely talked about exploring your creative side ben how did you because you talked about transferring right out of neurosciences yeah. Yeah. yeah what made you decide to take the course that you're currently taking now yeah i was very stubborn i was like okay if i'm gonna do neuroscience i'm gonna finish it early i'm gonna graduate early in three years and i'm gonna get it over with so while everyone was shopping for classes in their first years I was very um uh, adamant of getting away all my requirements out of the way just taking courses that is relevant to neuroscience and that was it. I mean, I love my people. I love the community there. Um so I guess that made me 
less aware of how dreary this is and how much of it was similar to how I was feeling in high school. And I realized that in sophomore year, I was like, okay, I need something new. You know, I'm gonna shop for classes. I'm gonna try different things. So the most diverse set of classes that I've ever had so far was my first semester in sophomore year. I took politics, I took econ, which I've sworn in my life never to take. Even if I knew like, oh, I wanted to learn about film and I had an idea of what my college life would look like, like, oh, I'm gonna study new languages, I'm gonna take certain classes, but I didn't stick to it. Like at the last minute, I would always back out of it where I would just stick to the safe path where it's like, no, just finish your, just finish your requirements and do that and whatnot, right? And leave the exploration to extracurricular yeah. activities and societies. That's like how I've always operated in high school as well, was I've had this really weird situation that just fall into my lap where I had, was scouted for this choir that went to international tours and competitions. So it felt like my school life and my extracurricular activities were two separate identities. My school life was so heavily influenced by STEM and all of these things that are serious, you know? And then the rest was more of me exploring whether it was like ballet classes, ice skating, like whatsoever thing that was not necessarily governed by the idea of being a scholar. I've always had this mindset then where everything that was fun and everything that was rejuvenating for me was other than my studies. So I actually did my shopping my sophomore year, um, late to the game. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? Like I fell in love so much with media studies. Um, and I realized like, okay, if things don't happen, because by your sophomore year, you have to decide on what it is your major is. Like people are declaring their majors and whatnot. Guess what I declared? I declared neuroscience because I'm an idiot. Um, and then I decided that, um, I decided that, you know what? Like I'm not happy. I don't know what made, I like something, obviously like so, there was a catalyst that made me realize that. I had this realization where I was stuck in a lab doing a surgery back to back because my professor drilled it to me that it, you're going to you're going to inherit the muscle memory better if you do it back to back mm -hmm. rather than just doing it 10 minutes a day 10 minutes a day 10 minutes a day that's not going to happen um technically a surgery would last more than 10 minutes but you get the point um, and i was just i i was just waiting for um what was i waiting for i think i was waiting for like a post-op to happen or something like that and yeah i was waiting for my rat to wake up um, and then I just had this idea where it's like, dude, I'm spending eight hours doing something that I know for sure I'm not going to do. Um, because I was very sure of the fact that I'm not going to work in the lab. Um, wow. I was very sure that I'm not going to be a researcher. It's like, what am I doing? You know? Um, and that's when I come to, you know, just confront the ego where it's like, I'm clearly only here because I'm holding on to that safety net of people seeing me a certain way. Um, and it's not making me happy. And I thought like, if I could spend eight hours doing something I'm not even gonna use in my future, I might as well invest the eight, eight, those eight hours doing something that I would still do in the future. I genuinely enjoyed my time there. It just, I realized it's not what it's not what's for me anymore. Like I outgrew the place. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided to leave, pack up my bags. Yeah, I have, I'm learning, I think a little bit to just trust my instincts I think is like the most important part where I do take courses now where I'm not super limiting myself like oh just do your major and that's it no like I do take courses I have a list where it's like okay at least one course one course where it is something that I will not be trampled down on you know that is not that is related to my major but is also something that I'm passionate about or something that I truly wanted to work on I had a more direct thought about that when you said that you outgrew being in a small community and wanted to move to a metropolitan my mindset was as a city person i cannot live in the countryside that's what that's what i thought you meant because my friends and i have very similar experiences we as city folk think i hate being in a big bustling city i'm gonna move to the countryside when i grow older then you go to the countryside and you realize i cannot do this you said something about 
starting new ventures and like starting something new right goes through your mind when you what goes through your mind that pushes you to start something new like start learning a new skill a new language or like i think you mentioned to us some time ago that you started directing your own show was it i have to make sure that like what i do is an experiment every time i start something new like i treat it i treat it as if i'm experimenting on myself because that takes away like the fear of failure and like the fear that like oh this is stupid you know because trust me like the noise in my head where it's like oh what are you even doing this for like why are you being so weird like really like what is this thing you know that's very incessant and it's there but i think when i always phrase it as a way where it's just like oh like i'm just going to see where it goes and i don't have any expectations um and so like when i tried directing for the first time that was something that i was not i don't think i'm qualified for it and i don't think it was something that a lot of people thought about you know like i think a lot of people who are in directing have that specific mindset like i remember someone telling me before i was directing a show that directing is that do or die you know it's like this is your passion or this is nothing like someone actually told me that nope. but it was something it was some something of that kind of sentiment where it's like you either feel called to direct or nothing at all right and i think like the whole idea of like all or nothing is almost I think it's something that people always use no matter where which field you're in, right? Like take for example like the doctor example. It's like are you feeling called to do this or not, right? Um but I think for me like the idea of that, well that's great. Like I think it limits you, you know? For like I think there's there's a 1% group who woke up one day as a child and realized I'm just going to perform for the rest of my life. and then you know good for them you know they found they found out what it is they want to do and they still do it today but for the majority of us it's not that it's a lot about like testing things and like figuring out what you want and so when i get the opportunity to like direct a show that was because i i told myself i was like okay i've always wanted to do it i've worked in the past as a stage manager production manager production assistant like i did all of those um a little thing like i did all the roles that is not technically the direct thing but i thought that because i had all these insights on who works to the director and what to like start it yeah. um because it's no it's not like jumping to the deep end and not knowing what to expect um but just getting more knowledge i think helps that's so long winded but i think at the end of the day i think it's all about you know like having that good balance of not restricting yourself because i've done that i've been there where i restrict myself to just like yeah let's just do neuro like not even care about the rest and that didn't end up so well yeah. um and let giving myself a bit of you know like a bit of space to just explore i think is important i've heard like there was someone who said this whole idea about the about like the reason why you feel stuck or the reason why you feel like you're not doing enough is not because you're actually stuck like there's actually two branches of it so like one of it is that you're not again like okay the overarching idea is that when you feel a certain way that's your body's signal telling you that something is not right right that something is not fulfilled some kind of yeah. thing but feeling stuck can actually mean two things because on one hand is it you not growing in that area that you dictate yourself to be in so you think that you're stuck because you actually feel like well i'm just stagnantly here but that doesn't mean that you have to change or dismantle everything that you know and like oh start fresh but sometimes it's just it's just a matter of maybe you're just not having enough novelty in the area that you're working at or like the discipline you set yourself on right the other part is about feeling stuck because your soul purpose or like okay that sounds so woo woo but like your purpose or like your some kind of need outside of your work life is not being fulfilled so on like on the previous side is about like serving people while on the other side is like what kind of service are you giving yourself 
because sometimes people are stuck because you don't have enough novelty in your life um and it's not about like your path but like you as a person are not fulfilling your own need of exploration because i think there's like two distinct way where like sometimes you do things for other people and sometimes you have to do things for yourself like at the end of the day the message still stands right that you have to be able to do something for yourself but also for other people right and too much of one and not the other is bad and i think we need to stop thinking about stereotyping and boxing ourselves but how are we able to learn from what we did or grow it or grow into it and actually collaborate with different people i was moved into it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think there's like a good distinction i i think there's like a difference between who you are and what you do but sometimes there's that little section where it both intersect yeah. and if when that intersects that sometimes is like the hardest part to admit to someone on like telling them what who you are because it feels so personal that you don't want to be judged by what you do but at the same time it's also who you are i definitely feel like connecting to other people requires a certain level of self contentment it's yeah. difficult because we grow up in a society where we're always being criticized right right but if you want to connect with someone you have to be open and in order to be open you need to be happy with who you are as a person yeah. and that takes time that definitely took a lot of time for me but it's worth it if you get to connect with people i guess <laughs> you know so so sure <laughs> I can say that because it's easy for me to I have a certain level of detachment to my experiences. I feel like if I tell to someone let's say that I didn't enjoy MUN and I told people I did MUN, I would have just straight up just said I did MUN though and I hated it and that opens up in its own discussion. While other people, I guess like you mentioned that you're more concerned about what other people think of you that becomes a different conversation right do i bring up this topic do i not bring up that topic right it's just for you like for me like that's i think that's refreshing when you just go like yeah i did this and i hate it i always like to gauge how they feel about it so like i'll probably i could probably say like oh yeah i do this but that's it like i don't tell them like like the first time i say i bring that up I won't ever say like by stance on it. I'll just be like, "Oh, what do you think about this?" Or like, "I did this." And then I ask them like, "Oh, you do it too. Like, well, how do you feel about it?" Because then that gives me like it doesn't I think in my perspective it's it gives it more on like a neutral ground because they'll be more honest about what their opinions are. At least I hope so. I don't know, <laughs> they're not. But, you know, like I feel like it's more neutral cuz I personally just like care about like what other people are thinking versus my own thing. It's like, I know. I live with myself 24/7. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I want to know what other people are like. Um and so like that like from that on like if if for example like we don't see eye to eye on something, then I want to know why. So I just dig people up and like okay, tell me tell me more about you. I'll like tell you like the most <laughs> I'll tell you like the barest thing about me, but like I want to know more about you and like who you are. So, so what you're saying is in a conversation we always need someone like me and someone like you. <laughs> I mean I think that's you know what like it works right it works cuz that it'd be like okay like someone's more open to sharing I'm not really super keen on like knowing things like I don't I don't find myself interesting enough for people to like dig up what I like and what I don't like but I want to know more about people plus I think it's also like on the plus side I feel like I could pull up the writer card oh like yeah, yeah I just want to do research you know I just want to know how people think um, and it's so like it makes like i think it's more of just recognizing like who you're with like how people think like that has always fascinated me which also probably is why i duped myself into thinking that i like psychology or neuroscience or whatnot. yeah all right so that's pretty much it from us message of the day don't box yourself in uh try new things you know venture out don't limit yourself to what society and you yourself say Yeah, and it's not wrong to outgrow stuff. It's just yeah, it's Thank not you. wrong. To Thank you for listening. Thank you, Benita, Thank for, for coming and yeah, having thanks. a Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. Thank you for listening to the Peak Boredom Podcast. This is Mars and Inga signing off. And don't forget to tune in next week. Peace.
please. Bye.